Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and this is a morning market update for Thursday, December 13th, 2018. Uh, we'll keep this one quick. Not a lot has happened um, in, in recent days. Uh, yesterday marked the third update. Um, well, I'll get to the intraday charts in a second. We did have a, a pretty decent fade of the rally. However, we had a huge rally going on. We were up about 2.5% or so at one time in QQQ, and we still closed the day solidly positive in both SPY and QQQ, and that is the most important thing. Uh, so so, you know, you can look at the glass half empty, glass half full. You can say, oh, well, the bears rated, you know, faded that rally hard. Or you can say, well, at the end of the day, SPY closed up better than a half a percent. Uh, and QQQ, I think it was 0.88, if I remember correctly. Solid gains on both. And uh, again, we haven't had, uh, if you look at the, here's a chart since the correction started. Uh, yesterday marked the third green candle. So far today, we're working on the fourth. Now, today is very young. The market's just opened. Um, but uh, so that, that candle could certainly turn red. But so far, three consecutive green candles. And uh, that's all we've had so far in this rally. We haven't even had a fourth. This one, this rally was Went on we had a, on the fourth day a consolidation day a little bit of a red candle there but so far that's it with three green candles uh is is that the most we've had at any point in a rally uh since this whole thing started and you know here's one way to look at this correction uh it's going on for months now however the correction was pretty much over uh for the most part uh pretty quickly as far as is is price goes. You know, I always say this, stocks or the market can correct in one of two ways or a combination of both, time and or price. So when you look at what happened here, the the, the drop, we had a marginal new low this week on Monday, uh, very slight undercut of the lows, but for the all intents and purposes, that was about an equal low, right? So there's your initial leg down, and so far it's been a sideways grind. So we can look at the correction this way. We've had uh, we've been trading sideways now for months with a you know a couple very sharp uh, certainly tradable trends within there. Um, now it's more of an active trader's market, and here's where we're at right now. So let's see. You know all you can do at this point um, is you know look to you know watch the bottom of the range, watch the top of the range. We're not going to trade sideways forever. We'll break out sooner or later. And as of now, they defended the bottom of the range successfully. And more importantly to me, they did so. There were two things that uh, are, are still keeping me bullish at this point in time. And number one, as I have already mentioned this, on Monday we saw a, uh, a, a bear trap, a.k.a. false breakdown. And I always say this, fewer things in trading are more powerful than a failed breakout. And that is because, especially when bear sentiment was already through the roof after you know a couple months of the correction, the sharp pullback, I have to imagine a lot of traders shorted that break to new lows. And the fact that we recovered that day dip down and then put in this potential reversal candle, which has now been followed up so far with two green closes afterwards. Um, you know, anytime you have a potential bottoming candle uh, or a potential topping candle for that matter, uh, to me, you have to see, or I like to see follow through by, in other words, if it's a bottoming candle, I want to see the next couple candles green. The greener they are, the better they are, meaning it's, you know, the more, uh, the stronger the gains. Likewise, on a topping candle, if you get a bearish engulfing candle at the top, you want to see a red candle follow. So so the fact we had that flush out move, and it wasn't so much, uh, and here's the other thing I've talked about for a while. Early on, I was looking forward, talking about, you know, uh, looking for a, maybe a selling climax, a big washout move. And what started turning me off to that uh, in recent weeks is everybody else was. That's all I would hear about, you know, on the, on the internet and the media, um, everybody looking for the washout move. And because of that, when everyone's expecting the same thing, you usually don't get it. So what I said the other day, corrections can end in two ways. They can end in a whimper or a bang. This would be a whimper. This was basically another test of the lows. Wasn't a huge day that day. Um, we didn't have an explosive candle upside uh, to follow it up. Um, but so far, it's been a whimper. And what will happen, I think, if you continue to see the market move up, you're going to see more and more people realize they were sitting there waiting for that ideal bottom. They were waiting for a green light to flash to say, bye, 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 bye. They didn't get it. And uh, two things. It's going to trap those shorts that were going to sit tight 
holding for that washout move. Um, they're already being squeezed out. There's uh, nobody can argue that that uh, there weren't quite a bit of shorts that probably shorted the low that day or were already short going in, uh, and that they're getting squeezed right now. You know, percentage wise from the lows. Um, the market from to the highs yesterday was up almost 4%. And from where we're at right now, we're still up about 3% from those lows. So um, there's shorts being squeezed out. I'm sure some have are feeling the pain and they may continue again. This is, I'm talking the bullish scenario right now, and that's what I'm still leaning towards. Uh, and so we still have these moving averages. Where we go from here, I, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate my near-term targets. I'm not that sure um, where we go from there, I'll get to those on the intraday charts in a second here, but we're also eyeing these, these 50 and 200 day moving averages. Now, here's another thing that, um, is, is, uh, kind of leaning me towards a bullish case from a contrarian perspective is that a while back, back here and here and here, I kept talking about potential death crosses on the 50 and 200. Then I started hearing it from everybody and their brother, you know, I'd turn on, you know, the TV or read the paper uh, scan the headlines online. Everyone's talking about a death cross, the 50 moving over the 200 day. And we got it the other day in the SPY. Um, problem is when too many people are all looking for the same thing and all positioning the same, uh, it usually doesn't stick. So this may prove to be a whipsaw signal uh, with the 50 moving back over the uh, 200 soon. As of now, that death cross is still in play. But again, I don't like the fact that everybody was looking for a washout move and everyone was looking for that death cross makes me think that uh, the death cross may be a whipsaw signal and that this the correction may have ended with a whimper, not a bang. Uh, so, and again, longer term, don't get me wrong. The longer term charts to me are clearly bearish. I'm only talking about near term, you know, uh, next few days, possibly that December rally I'm talking about here. All right, so there's that's the bigger picture on SPY, and uh, most importantly, this plays a big part into my my decision uh, to you know you know or expectation of a, a nice potential rally here is we have this strong bullish divergence. We had it on the second low on QQQ. I'll get to that chart in a second. When the Qs made that second low right here after the first one, um, they put in bullish divergence and rallied, and they've never put in. So far, the Qs have made higher lows so far, where SPY made that one more low, but it gave us that divergent low that we didn't have before. So I have green lights, at least from that point of view, positive divergence on the daily time frame on both SPY and QQQ, and that's what I had from this point on Monday. Uh, so let's look at QQQ. We'll go to the intraday charts, and then we'll wrap this up. So there's that, uh, as you can see, and I've mentioned this for now for the last couple weeks or so, about last week or two, uh, is that it appears to me that the market-leading FANG stocks, F-A-A-M-G, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, they seem to be sold out. Uh, and they certainly in the last, uh, you know, recently have, have been acting uh, better than the a lot of the uh, s p 500 stocks especially the financials the industrials energy um so some relative strength there and so the story on qqq was we put in the q's bottom so far back on that second low back in november and when s p 500 bottom recently q's put in a higher low don't get me wrong the longer term technicals you have a mountain of resistance ahead this is why i'm not like i'm not uber bullish right now i'm just near term bullish and i'm not very long term bullish um but opening open to the possibility that we rally for the next few weeks here and hey we can turn down at any point in time and i may go back to bearish and short uh, right now i'm still sticking with the longs as i said Despite the fade yesterday, we still closed solidly green and we're following through again today green uh, right now as I do the video. There's our death cross. Uh, and so, yeah, like I said, I, I, I will most likely, if my near-term targets that I've shared last few days, I'll go over those again today. If they get hit soon, I'll probably go flat. Uh, I don't... Uh, I'll have to think that through. I may trail a stop up uh, on some or all of those positions. Um, 
you know, because I think there's going to be a lot of people looking and expecting uh, to get short or for a failure here when the around these uh, exponential moving averages. And again, there's a lot of resistance overhead, but sometimes that's where you get the powerful rally, especially if this bottom did catch a lot off guard. So I, I, I think it might be worth, uh, and I'll, I'll have to put some thought into that and I'll convey my thoughts uh, as to whether to, you know, book full profits if, if when these near-term targets that I'm looking at are hit or just uh, trail, uh, set a trailing stop or a hard stop and let things ride. Because uh, that's sometimes where you make the nice gains where nobody else sees a rally coming. Everybody thinks we're going to fail here and to pop above it and maybe go up for a back test. I mean, that would be a powerful, you know, Santa rally. Come all the way up, back test the trend lines again. Um, not crazy about it because we already back tested them once before. But uh, possibility there. Let's just get to the 60-minute charts. And again, I'll communicate my thoughts as we go. Uh, this is a 60-minute chart. So what happened yesterday is uh, QQQ popped above that 166 level. I'll get to SPY in a second. What happened is SPY failed at resistance or here above. So QQQ managed to break out above 166, which I thought would open the door for move up to 168.50. And I still do. But it pulled back. It, you know, Remember, QQQ was up almost 2.5% yesterday. That's a huge gain. There was some profit taking, which is natural, especially with what's going on lately. And I'm sure some people shorting and everything else. Um, but so far, look, we're back above. We regained it. We dipped below it. There was a big gap to backfill. Um, and uh, we're, we're above that 166, and that looks good. And then the market's up as I'm doing the video, three quarters of a percent. So nothing's really changed in my, my, my near-term outlook. And again, these are the near-term targets. I'm looking for a move up to that 168.50-ish level. And at that point... Uh, from there, I will probably step back again, maybe take some profits, if assuming we get there, or set a trailing stop on maybe some swing positions and let them ride uh, to see see what kind of uh, traction we might get in this rally. Uh, on the on QQQ, not yet on SPY, but on QQQ, we just made a bullish cross uh, back above the zero line on the 9 EMA. Uh, some of you know that's one of my uh, favorite intermediate or short-term trend indicators. And what that is, this is a signal line on the PPO. When that line is above the zero line, the trend is bullish, uh, as it was there. And when it's below the zero line, as it was for most of this, barring this little whipsaw signal there, the trend is bearish, as you can see. It does a pretty good job. Bullish trend, bearish trend, bullish trend, bearish trend, and it just recently crossed. Uh, so there's, the, again, my preferred target, and here's an uptrend line to watch. I showed you one on the futures yesterday that was taken out, but we fell back to support on the futures here. I didn't draw that too well. Let's try it again here. There we go. So let's watch this trend line. Um, I'm using log scaling on this chart. Um, so if you want to replicate that, set your chart to log scaling and uh, just catch off the recent lows on the 10th. And uh, that's, I think, a level to watch on QQQ or to buy on a pullback too. But again, we're getting close to my near-term target. I don't know if I'd be chasing new long positions here, but I did I did add today on the pullback this morning. All right, so uh, SPY, let's see if we can replicate that trend line here. Come off the lows. There we go, somewhere along these lines. And... Um, you know, big, nice fade yesterday. So here's what happened yesterday. We popped above. If you recall, I had this resistance zone from 268.41 to 267.24. We popped just a hair above it. Looked like we were going to go. I thought we would. We took it out, but it failed. It was a false breakout. We just barely made it above there and fell right back down. So there was some profit taking. But again, uh, we're moving back up. We're back to above the bottom of that support zone or uh, resistance zone, I guess we call it now. And uh, I'm still looking for one more thrust up to that 270.36 level, at which point we'll probably get a pullback and maybe, you know, quick short off that level. But again, I'd like to just kind of step aside and, and see what happens. It's hard to say. We'll just have to see how the charts look from when we get there. We could, we could go on right on through it. But uh, it's a pretty pretty decent resistance level. And again, you can see if that level's taken out, you can see some of my other levels uh, marked above. Okay, and we'll wrap this up with the futures. Uh, so in the futures yesterday, these are this is NQ, the Nasdaq 100 futures. You know, I mentioned we had a we had negative divergence on the. Um, 
RSI, not so much on the PPO, almost divergence, but not quite. And I had a trend line there that was violated. Now, what happened is the trend line was violated, but we've held this support level. And this was a very, to me, a very significant support level. One, uh, the 60, 670, 67, 73, 74, call it. Uh, we held it, back tested uh, the trend, the uh, trend line again, fell back, held it again, and we moved up. This is bullish price action. Why? Because, you know, back here, 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 you break a 60-minute trend line, boom, the bottom falls out. Break down, back test, boom, the bottom falls out. Break down of a 60-minute trend line, the back test, boom, the bottom falls out. We're not seeing that so far. Maybe the bottom will fall out. Maybe I'll finish this video and the bottom drops out in the market. But uh, as long as we're above this 60 Let's say 67.70. I'm fine. I'm fine with my long positions. Um, there are sometimes I'll look at a rising wedge pattern of any bearish pattern, and if the trend I believe is bullish based on again everything. So I started with the long-term charts, the daily charts, and the price action recently. And at those points in time, you have to sometimes put a lower weighting or even dismiss a bearish chart pattern. Uh, you know, a purely mechanical trader is going to trade off every you know rising and falling wedge or every other trend line break um, and you will get smoked if you're doing that against the trend bullish chart patterns work better much better in a bullish trend bearish chart patterns work much better in a bearish trend uh, so that's that's what I'm looking at now let's look at ES and then we'll wrap it up ES similar story I had a uh, little 60 minute uptrend line drawn there and again we didn't have those trend lines. I just showed you the trend lines on the spy and QQQ which fit better so we had the divergent high right there also on the uh, RSI not so much it was a, almost an equal high but it was you know slightly those divergences were slightly taken out either way we had the RSI divergent led to that fade yesterday um, but we held this 260 2651 uh, support level like a champ so far on several tests and so now we're right now we're sandwiched we're boxed between the two uh, 2670 resistance level and that 2650 res uh, 51 support level and uh, I think where we go today uh, it will will depend on if we can break above there which is my favorite scenario come up to run up here to that 29 six uh, uh, 2696 level um, most likely have a reaction there and uh, if we break below that would be bearish and that probably bring us back down here to 2625 um, but as of now this is a scenario I'm favoring but this is a fast moving market and um, you know I'll have to respect anything that happens uh, you know, today, especially break of those levels I just gave you on, on NQ and ES. Uh, but as of now, that's what I'm looking for, a little more upside. And again, there's a potential that it could morph into more. Um, but I'll tell you, I, you know, there's just a lot of work for the markets to do right now on the upside. A lot of big resistance levels overhead. Um key moving averages, everything else, the, make no mistake about it, the intermediate to longer term posture of the market is bearish. And as such, um, never trust a bear, a, a bear market rally. They're profitable to trade and I'll stick with them as long as you know it looks good. And uh, when that time comes to pull the plug, you cannot stay too late to the party. Uh, but as of now, I'm in that party, kind of hoping there's a little more left. And I'll, I'll do my best to update my, or convey my thoughts if anything changes. But as of now, that's what I'm looking for. A little One more thrust up to those targets I've been highlighting over the last few days. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.